Hello everybody, hope you're doing well today. Uh, I wanted to show you a little breakdown of the QA I wrote for the Disney intro that I just uploaded a couple days ago. So if you haven't seen it yet, please have a have a watch. I'll link it down in the description below and then come back and then we'll discuss you know how it's put together. So in case you didn't want to watch it, uh, I'll, let me play through the track just once here and then we'll discuss it, okay? Sorry for the pops and clicks there. When uh, the screen flows recording, it kind of pushes the CPU past its limit. So that's what that's from. But if you watch the actual clip that I uploaded, it doesn't have those, of course. OK, so let's discuss it. Um, <clears throat> let me just open the contact instance here. And you can see the way it's organized right now. It's in, uh, in colors and groups. So I have harps at the top, and then I have violins, uh, or strings, rather. And then I have woodwinds, and then I have brass. And then again, down here we have another instance. So we have cymbals and timpani, so a little percussion, and then strings, and then uh, woodwinds and trumpets, or brass, I should say. So the reason I have two contact instances is twofold. Number one, when I was filling up you know, my first contact instance, I, I basically ran out of tracks. So I had, um, yeah, basically you can have up to 16 different um, tracks in one contact distance, right? When you're in logic. So I had to open up a second one anyway. And uh, the second reason is because there were additional elements I did want to have in there to fill out the rest of the orchestration. So let's go through it a little bit. <clears throat> so what we have here is a whole bunch of patches. We have the harps, as you can see up here, the harps. And then um, now we have flute, celli, oboe, violins, celli, <clears throat> low chords, clarinet. So you can see they're kind of all over the place. And the reason is because whatever first comes into my mind, that's the thing I want to put down first. And so there's no real order to which instrument I'm going to lay down first. It's really just, okay, I think I want to add this element next. So then I'll drag in that patch and then I'll record that in. Um, and that's it. And so after I've done that and I want to start mixing, then I'll organize it into its instrument groups and then I'll color code it and all that. So um, that's why these are kind of you know out of order a little bit. So what you have here is Berlin strings. Um, and this is the main patch, which I can see if I can find here. Violins one legato right there. And uh, Berlin strings does sound pretty good. So if you layer that with cinematic studio strings, which we did here, uh, actually, let me play them separately first. So this is Berlin. And now let me add it in CSS. Let me play by itself. And then both. Okay, so one thing here I wanted to uh, talk about really, really quickly, and it's a very small detail, but the reason I put CSS doing that extra line up top da, 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 instead of doubling the melody is for one reason only. So this is it here. The character of CSS is so lush and so romantic and the vibrato is so strong that I wanted it to be audible and heard really well over the top of the orchestra when, you know, when they're playing that final chord. And so with that character, Right? And so that's the reason I did that there. Instead of doubling it with a melody, I wanted that extra height in the orchestration. So that's the melody. Um, and then the other thing that gives it that airy feeling is the flute parts. So let's just play the th three um, flute parts by themselves. These are from Berlin Woodwinds, by the way. Revive. Revive. 
So let's see. The first flute is the one playing. Um, the yeah, the octave above, and then flute two is playing the unison melody, and then the third flute is providing harmony there. So one more time. The great thing, the great thing about Berlin Woodwinds is that it comes with three separate flute players, so you can just, um, you know, there's actually three different people playing these instruments, so it sounds uniquely different every time. So you can see I have a bassoon here, just outlining the bass line, which is descending. And then I really like the clarinet because it's an, a mid-range instrument. Basically, it can fill out a lot of the um, the empty spaces in the melody. And so the bassoon and oboe play similar roles here. Um, so let's actually just hear those. I really like the oboe. It's one of my favorite, if not my favorite, woodwind instrument actually. So you can see there, it fills it in. Now the other comes in. Because I love the sound of the oboe so much, I bring it up in its register um, to let it soar over a little bit. <clears throat> okay, so there's that. And then meanwhile, I have the violas. Um, the violas fill in the mid-range as well to give that sustaining, to give the little pad-like feeling, right? Without it, you really miss something there. And then the celli basically outlines the harmony, I think. Let's see. I think it comes in right about here. Pizzicato gives it a little bit of uh, bounciness in the beginning, the light, spritey feeling. Right. So that. Right, but then let's go on. Okay. Here the French horn comes in when I have the break in the melody right here. So not, it doesn't actually double the melody, it plays a couple n different notes, different chord notes to fill in the rest of the uh, chord. Bass trombone does a similar thing. <clears throat> actually, I believe I only... Yeah, it only the very bass, and it just gives a little support at the bottom. And by the way, both of these are from Berlin Brass, okay? main main library from orchestral tools and then the low chords is cine orc from cine samples and i only have it for these last two chords right there so you get that warmth um from there and the question wise let's see And so the Tiffany roll is from Cineperk. Actually, both of these are from Cineperk. Um, in order to get the suspenseful feeling or that you're building up, that's what I did the timpani, that's why I did the timpani roll on the dominant chord, dominant seventh chord, and then land on the tonic, and roll crescendo, boom, done. And then the cymbals basically just emphasize the downbeat. And then I have the roll symbols to crescendo to the very end there. Cool. And then we have, uh, these are very simple. These are both from Cine Samples. Oh, sorry, sorry. Um, these are both from Cine Samples. So Cine Strings runs 
and Hollywood Winds. You know, these are both a flourishy type of libraries that they put out. So they just switch out to the end. And that's it. So let's play them individually because I love the sound of these and I can't never get enough. Okay, so very raw and organic sound. And then Hollywood Winds is just classic William sounding. There we go. Perfect. And um, these are just the stage mics for the Hollywood Winds because I didn't want that much definition. I wanted them to sound like, you know, they're a bit further back in the orchestra uh, working with everything else. And then finally, the trumpets here I have outlining the very last few notes of the melody. So let's see. from uh, center brass so trumpet ensemble from center brass chorus six horns from from pro i believe and then monster brass is from center brass pro as well so yeah let, let's actually quickly listen to what these two are doing right there Okay, so yeah, the monster press outlines the E at the very end as, as the pedal, and then we have uh, the six horns giving you that dun, 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 dun. just like that. So it doesn't say static all the way through that chord. Okay, let's quickly talk about uh, the actual processing at the at the mix bus level here. So. What I did was basically, I, I do uh, top-down mixing. So what that means is I'll start at the mix bus and then I'll work my way backwards. If there's any other instruments that require a little processing, then I'll add a bit to that. But, you know, in this kind of genre, you don't really need that much processing because it's orchestral and you want a more natural sounding uh, mix, right? So first thing I plopped on was a directional mixer, which you can tell does this. So it makes everything mono, okay? And mixing in mono is a good idea because you want to be able to hear, um, you want to be able to hear the improvements just from mixing in mono. And then in order to get that stereo sound, it'll just be simply amazing when you hear all those changes in the stereo field. So force yourself to mix in mono and it'll really help, I think. Okay, then what we have is Pro-Q2, so a little EQ just to make tiny EQ adjustments. So I really like the sound of this low, in here, give the little weight so it emphasizes the celli pizzicato. Around uh, what, 244 hertz, and then a little bit of that boxiness there. So I added a bit of a bit more sheen to the very top to give it that top end. A little bit of SSL. Uh, compressor to let it um, take over just at the very end to control the dynamics very slightly. And then the Greg Wells Mix Centric, I just used to um, give it a bit of harmonic distortion, a little bit of extra EQ compression. It just tightened up the whole mix just a little touch. And then finally, a, little, a limiter here to push up the volume um, in order to match commercial standards. So. It started here, I pushed it all the way down until the signal reached, uh, or until the signal started to get processed. So, and then I started to see attenuation right there. So maybe I can play a little bit. So that's the amount of compression that's happening there. And then when I set it to minus 0 0.1 decibels, that's the absolute limit at which the volume can reach. So it's a brick wall. Once it hits minus 0 0.1, the volume cannot go any further. So there we go. And then a little additional reverb on a couple of instruments. So six horns, I just put a little reverb on it to give it its space. And then same with um, the harps, the 
uh, brilliant strings, violins, violas, and yes, the harp pluck as well. So the reason I did it for the harps is that the harp sound is very intimate. Um, it's very close up and uh, you can hear every single string being plucked. So usually in, in an orchestral setting, you have the harp further back in the mix, right? Or in the orchestra. And so, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's the theme. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know uh, if you have any comments, suggestions, and I'd love to hear them out. So without, for, uh, without further ado, uh, I'll see you next time, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and uh, please leave your video suggestions as well in the description or in your comments in the comments below. So thanks, thanks a lot, guys. I'll see you in the next video.